Number one, God is the best explanation of the origin of the universe. Have you ever asked yourself where the universe came from? Why anything at all exists instead of just nothing? Well, typically atheists have said that the universe is just eternal and uncaused. But there are good reasons, both philosophically and scientifically, to doubt that this is the case. Philosophically, the idea of an infinite past seems absurd. If the universe never had a beginning, that means that the number of past events in the history of the universe is infinite. But mathematicians recognize that the existence of an actually infinite number of things leads to self-contradictions. For example, what is infinity minus infinity? Well, mathematically, you get self-contradictory answers. This shows that infinity is just an idea in your mind, not something that exists in reality. David Hilbert, perhaps the greatest mathematician of the 20th century, writes, the infinite is nowhere to be found in reality. It neither exists in nature nor provides a legitimate basis for rational thought. The role that remains for the infinite to play is solely that of an idea. But that entails that since past events are not just ideas but are real, the number of past events must be finite. Therefore, the series of past events can't go back and back forever. Rather, the universe must have begun to exist. This conclusion has been confirmed by remarkable discoveries in astronomy and astrophysics. In one of the most startling developments of modern science, we now have pretty strong evidence that the universe is not eternal in the past, but had an absolute beginning about 13 billion years ago in a cataclysmic event known as the Big Bang. What makes the Big Bang so special is that it represents the origin of the universe from literally nothing. As the physicist PCW Davies explains, the coming into being of the universe, as discussed in modern science, is not just a matter of imposing some sort of organization upon a previous incoherent state, but literally the coming into being of all physical things from nothing. The Big Bang thus marks the origin not only of all the matter and energy in the universe, but of physical space and time themselves. Now, of course, alternative theories have been crafted over the years to try to avert the beginning predicted by the standard model. But none of these has commended itself to the scientific community as more plausible than the Big Bang theory. In fact, in the year 2003, Arvind Bord, Alan Guth, and Alexander Vilenkin were able to prove that any universe which has, on average, been in a state of cosmic expansion cannot be eternal in the past, but must have an absolute beginning. Vilenkin pulls no punches. I quote, it is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men, and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. That problem was nicely captured by Anthony Kenney of Oxford University. He writes, a proponent of the Big Bang Theory, at least if he is an atheist, must believe that the universe came from nothing and by nothing. But surely that doesn't make sense. Out of nothing, nothing comes. Such a conclusion is, in the words of philosopher of science Bernhard Kanitscheider, in head-on collision with the most successful ontological commitment in the history of science, namely the principle, out of nothing, nothing comes. So, why does the universe exist instead of just nothing? Where did it come from? There must have been a transcendent cause which brought the universe into being. We can summarize our argument thus far as follows. One, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Two, 
the universe began to exist. Three, therefore, the universe has a cause. Now, as the cause of space and time, this being must be an uncaused, timeless, spaceless, immaterial being of unfathomable power. Moreover, it must be personal as well. Why? Well, first of all, because this event must be beyond space and time. Therefore, it cannot be physical or material. Now, there are only two kinds of things that fit that description either abstract objects like numbers or an intelligent mind. But abstract objects can't cause anything. Therefore, it follows that the cause of the universe is a personal transcendent mind. Secondly, how else could a timeless cause give rise to a temporal effect like the universe? If the cause were an impersonal set of necessary and sufficient conditions, then the cause could never exist without its effect. If the cause were permanently present, then the effect would be permanently present as well. The only way for the cause to be timeless and the effect to begin in time is for the cause to be a personal agent who freely chooses to create an event in time without any antecedent determining conditions. And thus we are brought not merely to a transcendent cause of the universe, but to its personal creator. Number two, God is the best explanation of the fine tuning of the universe for intelligent life. In recent decades, scientists have been stunned by the discovery that the initial conditions of the Big Bang were fine tuned for the existence of intelligent life with a precision and delicacy that literally defy human comprehension. This fine tuning is of two sorts. First, when the laws of nature are given mathematical expression, you find appearing in them certain constants like the gravitational constant. These constants are not determined by the laws of nature. The laws of nature are consistent with a wide range of values for these constants. Second, in addition to these constants, there are certain arbitrary quantities which are just put in as initial conditions on which the laws of nature operate. For example, the amount of entropy or the balance between matter and antimatter in the universe. Now, all of these constants and quantities fall into an extraordinarily narrow life-permitting range. Were these constants or quantities to be altered by even a hair's breadth, a life-permitting balance would be destroyed and life would not exist. For example, if the atomic weak force or the force of gravity were altered by as little as one part out of 10 to the 100th power, the universe would not have been life permitting. Now, there are only three possible explanations of this extraordinary fine tuning, physical necessity, chance, or design. Now, it can't be due to physical necessity because as we've seen, the constants and quantities are independent of the laws of nature. In fact, string theory predicts that there are around 10 to the 500th power different universes compatible with nature's laws. So could the fine tuning be due to chance? Well, the problem with this alternative is that the odds against the fine tunings occurring by accident are so incomprehensibly great that they cannot be reasonably faced. The probability that all the constants and quantities would fall by chance alone into the narrow life permitting range is vanishingly small. We now know that life prohibiting universes are vastly more probable than any life permitting universe like ours. So if the universe were the product of chance, the odds are overwhelming that the universe would be life prohibiting. Hence, we may argue as follows. Premise one, the fine tuning of the universe is due to either physical necessity, chance, or design. Two, it is not due to physical necessity or chance. Three, therefore, it is due to design. And thus, the fine tuning of the universe for intelligent life implies the existence of a designer of the cosmos.